Hey guys, this is uh, David from Bioponica. Just uh, showing you another little clip from the bio garden here. Um, this is a 10 foot level unit with a deep water setup. I've got a vortex added in here, and which cycles on and off. I've got bamboo shading, this from cuts of bamboo that we grow for this purpose and others. Um, and I've got plants growing in this 10 foot trough in a deep water culture fashion. And what I wanna first point out is the fact that what we have here is uh, pretty remarkable because of the quality of roots that we're able to establish with these plants. This is shard. This is a plant. And it's growing very strong in a trough, in water, and its roots are even connected to these guys and to those guys and roots all around. They're interconnecting and they're communicating and they're, 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 they're sending nutrients to the plant in some kind of a neural like neural circuitry that mimics the you know nervous system of humans and vascular system. In this case, it's bringing nutrients and water and kidneys and digestive tract. Um, bringing water and nutrients um, to the to the plant and exchanging the you know creating an oxygen production and exchange of CO2 and oxygen and doing all those other wonderful things. But down here, we've got water and organic water, no chemicals at all added to it. Um, showing beautiful proliferation of roots and a very very healthy plant. All these health, all these plants are healthy. Cucumbers and squash, not recommended for for this. I am getting a few little cucumbers out of it, but um, just as of lately, maybe because I added some more minerals, but. Probably not the best plant for this kind of system, but if it turns out you, you can um, compensate for the maybe overhydration or something, uh, nutrients, uh, pH, to get these to darken up, then that would work good. But otherwise, we do great with plants that have uh, good root networks here that are you know, maintaining biological activity of microbes that are decomposing organics that we're feeding to the system. Um, establishing you know, biofiltration through the root system and through that biofiltration benefiting from the release of nutrients and colonizing you know, typical soil born microorganisms and then there's uh, you know just a, a, a the need for a balance of oxygen and and uh, nourishment and, and you know electrical conductivity and that sort of thing so but it all works out a lot easier and more naturally than doing something with chemicals. Look, I'm doing this from inexpensive biomass. Okay, look at these leaves. I don't know, but they're pretty freaking perfect. Now everybody sure it may look like this, but how much work did you put into making it grow? And how much weeding did you do? And soil management and nutrient input into the system and the work involved with composting and so on and so forth. And in chemical hydroponics, I mean, what are you discharging into the environment? Why are you doing all that? You want organic, it's easy. You don't have to spend a ton of money like you led to believe. So this is organic hydroponics. It's purely organic. There's no chemicals used. I'm not even putting a pH or an EC meter in there. I just look at my water I look at the vortex, I look at the clarity of the water, I look at the condition of the fish. Make sure there's, you know, all the systems are firing. But you can see I've got um, a pretty remarkable use of space here by these plants acting as companion plants. There's no weeds getting in between these shard and this basil. And so we'll get a very efficient production out of each square foot. And I also want to make a point about the square footage and gardening. Um, 
this may be a 10 foot long by foot and a half wide, 15 square foot growing system, but your growing area is much, much greater than that. And, and that's because you can either trellis it, like we do over there, or you can let your plants hang down here, like we do there, and like we do here, with that peppermint. And then the space that your other plants take up, like that goji berry, it's just blown up and just spread out like a giant you know, blueberry or something. But the space that's taken up by these plants is greater than the space uh, in the grow system. Which means we have a greater square foot growing area than, oh, sorry, than that which um, the, con the roots are contained in. So I think that's a very cool, it's a very important point about raised bed gardening and, and you know, gardening, um, you know, with trellises and, and, and hanging vines and things of that sort. Is you can, if you can maximize the performance of your, your, your water hydrating and nutrient system, then you can expand the growth, uh, you know, infinitely. If you've got vines, you can grow them all over the, all over the yard melons, all kinds of things, taking up a lot of space outside of this 15 square foot area grow bed. So anyway, our goal is to create very, very nice conditions for fish, for plants, uh, improving the, the availability of nutrients to plants, and hosting microorganisms that benefit the plants. I make a tea, I, I make an extract of leaching from this system right here. It's just our little worm trough. We just raise worms in there. I put them under a cover to keep them from drying out too much, but I got a lot of worms in there. And when it rains, we get the drainage leachings spill into that bucket, and I add the bucket to these systems where I've, it's, it's contained all, it contains all kinds of soil beneficial rhizobacteria produced by the worms and, and other organisms that are in the decomposing and in the composting matter. That composi decomposition is taking place because of microbes. And so we capture these microbes, whether they're fungal or bacterial. Bacterial is more preferable in systems like this, because we don't, we're not growing plants that require more fungal. But we also can colonize just about anything in here that may have symbiosis with something whether it's the nutrients we feed it, or whether it's you know, the exudates of a, of a plant root, or the, a, the consumption of, of uh, protozoans and nematodes and things of that sort. So the, the cycle uh, sort of continues. It gets, it's, it's sort of enhanced, if you will, by, by microbes. It's depended upon by microbes, but they also colonize naturally and and they're here on the roots, so, you know, just they, they're there, just like algae's there. You're, you're not going to grow a plant outside in a non-sterile system that's not going to get soil-borne microbes on it. But we colonize them and we add to it, and those colonize in the systems if we create systems that have good health, like the aeration, like the roots for, you know, surface area for biofiltration, like these bags that we put in the tanks for biofiltration. Um, and the vortex, it's oxygenating and, and breaking down organic matter and creating this beautiful river-like vortex energy that Victor Schauberger talks about. And we're maximizing square foot space. You know, this isn't a, this isn't a 12 square foot growing area. This is now uh, three feet wide uh, by four feet tall, um, three feet tall growing area. So this, you know, that's adding twice the grow area, more than twice the grow area to this air, this system right here. And if we're doing the same on the other side, as we are, then we're getting, we're, we're quadrupling our grow space. And that's because, and giving us aisles to work between. So we have these mounds of plants, mounds of, of produce growing off of the tables and giving us a very uh, high yield per square foot 
What's our new square footage? Is this a new square footage uh, measure or is this the table square footage? I think the area that the plant grows in should be the square footage. What do you think? Anyway, uh, thanks for enduring this 10 minute video. I just, uh, you know, love sharing and uh, appreciate you guys for watching.